In Revit, all of your model elements will belong to a family category. Family categories are umbrella groups for all of the objects of a particular type. Some examples of different family categories are walls, structural columns, floors, structural framing. Each family category has different associated properties. For example, the wall category has a base level and a top level, which defines the height of the wall. It also has properties which govern the build-up of the wall, each different layer in the wall in its associated thicknesses and materials. Structural columns will have some similar properties. For example, they will have a base level and a top level to define their height. They will have some properties, though, that are completely different, such as their cross-sectional profile. Different families can be one of three types, which affect how we edit them in Revit. System families are things like walls and floors. Typically, they occupy an area either in plan or section and have a constant build-up across their area. We can edit system families within our Revit project. Component families are things like beams and columns. They can be any form and are created in a separate file which is linked into the Revit project, much like a block in CAD. In order to edit these elements, we need to open a separate file and then load this back into the project. The final type is in-place families. These are typically used to model one-off bespoke items. Within each of these types, we have different family categories. Examples of system family categories are walls and floors. Within each family category, we have different families. There are three built-in wall families, which are a basic wall, a stacked wall, and a curtain wall. Within each of these families, you have different family types. For the basic wall family, you might have one wall family which is a 200mm concrete wall, and one which is a 300mm concrete wall, and one which is a brick outer leaf supported in an inner leaf of metal stud. These will all be different families. Now each time we choose to place a wall in the project, we create a different instance of that wall. Some properties will be different for each instance of the wall, such as the base and top constraints, but some properties are going to be the same for each wall of that type, such as the wall build-up. Now let's take a look at component families. Examples of component families are things like structural framing and structural columns. Within each family category, we then have different families. So you could choose to model your own component families for structural framing, or more likely you would choose to use a standard profile, such as a universal beam, a universal column, or maybe a wide flange section. Now within each of these families, you will have different family types. For my universal beam family, I may have many different family types. Each of the different standard section sizes for my universal beams are different family types, which all belong to the same universal beam family. Now every time I place a beam in the project, I create a different instance of the beam family. Again, each beam instance may have different level constraints, but all of the beams are of the same type, and they're going to have the same cross-sectional profile. Now properties that vary according to each instance of an element are called instance properties. These are things like base and top levels. Properties that vary according to the type of the family are called type properties. These are things like the wall build-up or the cross-section profile. Now it's important that we understand this hierarchy as it affects how we model our buildings in Revit. However, we are going to be covering this in a lot more detail throughout the course.